In this video, I'll teach you how to choose a good research question for your physics IA. Having a good research question doesn't mean you must get level 7. However, if you get a bad research question to start with, then it will be the same as starting with your wrong foot. So in that case, you may not even get level 6 or 7, no matter how hard you try in the later stage. So choosing a good research question is very, very important. So let's talk about what makes a good research question. First of all, like what we said in the previous video, you should only do one independent variable because out of the 12 pages, you don't have that many content uh, or space to talk about two uh, independent variables. So just do one and make sure that it's a very focused research question. Secondly, uh, you should probably uh, think of some background research and then uh, after you find that, it would be nice uh, if you can simply study the same thing but then you're using a different methodology so for example if you are studying on the magnetic force and there may be a different way to measure the magnetic force uh, in your setup so that could be something uh, it would be appreciated if you can try to think of something new and maybe uh, different slightly different from the existing research the best thing is, uh, in that case, you can then compare your method with other people's method. Number three is that uh, you, your research questions should have a strong physics background and or framework to support. That is to say, uh, hopefully, before you start, you should already find there is a certain formula or there should be uh, some research done by other people uh, so that you can follow and probably you can already see the independent and dependent variable has a certain mathematical relationship so for example it could be like uh, a strict line or a quadratic equation exponential equation uh, etc because only with such a strong framework uh, that in that case then you could uh, have a very clear mind and direction uh, when you do the evaluation and analysis even though from the official guideline from IBO said, oh, uh, it is not really necessary, uh, you can still, where there's no existing framework supporting uh, or explaining your research question, you can still kind of using the common physics knowledge you get. But I would say uh, within the usual physics IA, remember this is not EE, this is just IA. So the topic you do, very likely it has been done by many other people already so there should be a very well established relationship that you could find uh, if you cannot find it, it's just because you didn't try hard enough and lastly uh, it may be also good if you can I mean uh, to, to make it more scientifically interesting if you want to get uh, the two marks the highest band in the personal engagement uh, one way to one type of uh, really special good research question is to find the constant that we learn in physics so it could be well I think for gravitational constant uh, that may be too hard but if you can try to look for things like the say the gas constant coulomb constant permeability of free space those are something that uh, you could work on and it could be quite interesting too but of course that shouldn't be the only thing that uh, you should do for research question uh, there are actually many people uh, who are not finding constant, just finding relationship between uh, x and y. Uh, however, it should be socially relevant. So that is to say, like we said in the previous video, if you try to find the refractive index for something like uh, the syrup, how that will affect by the temperature, it doesn't sound like socially relevant. Because why do you like care about that in uh, the society or in your daily life? and it probably should not be in the IB syllabus directly okay I'll explain this part later on bad research question so the first example is saying uh, it cannot be repeated by other people easily and in fact this is not just about your research question but also about the methodology that you do so for example if your experiment involved too much uh, human as in uh, maybe in your methodology it relies on how you drop something 
or how the environment it may be unique uh, then it may not be a good method or even not a good research question so I had uh, students in the past uh, suggesting uh, studying topics like running or cycling so those are topics that if you cannot think of a methodology that you can reduce the involvement of human uh, then it won't be a good research question or methodology secondly uh, comparing the brands of different products so this is the same as biology and chemistry as well and it has been explicitly mentioned in uh, somewhere in the exam report that I've seen before so same for physics so for example if you're comparing different brands of uh, soccer shoes for example uh, is actually not a really good research question because again uh, first of all your independent variable should be quantifiable so if you just do different brand A, B, C, D is not something that you can describe with numbers and ultimately uh, you should link your two variable independent and dependent variable uh, together with the physical physics framework or concepts so having a different brand uh, it is actually quite hard to tell uh, the design or the like whatever internally uh, it has been made uh, for whatever product that you're studying so uh, just try to simplify your setup and uh, choose a quantifiable independent variable instead of comparing the brands number three uh, like we said actually earlier if there's no established relationship you can find at the same time you cannot derive anything from the physics law uh, then probably you should not do it uh, there are times where you could still derive something for example if you're doing mechanics quite likely you will start off with uh, Newton's law so for example like F equals MA and probably you can derive something and maybe together with the free body diagram also so if that's the case you can derive some interesting formula from the basic law uh, in physics then it will be nice right? and uh, even if you cannot really find much about the research uh, from other people it's, it's still acceptable but of course like I said earlier it will be the best if you can do both of these number four there's actually something called a list of prescribed lab in IP physics uh, which your teacher are expected to uh, cover this experiment uh, with you so these are like the very very basic practical activity uh, that IB kind of assigned to all the teachers that you have to cover and through this experiment uh, you can learn the basic technique for doing experiment so you can see a list here and you can try to take a look so say if you are uh, having your research question in uh, determining the acceleration of free fall that may not be a good idea if you want to achieve a high, higher level uh, or doing maybe finding specific heat latent specific heat capacity of water using uh, the calorimetric techniques again it is not something good or internal resistance etc alright so lastly then you may ask hey Mr. Wong can you give me some hints then uh, how can I think of a good like research question can you just tell me one uh, my answer is that uh, of course you can go and google it but those you find will be quite commonly done and I would say uh, it may be the best of your teachers interest and also the markers interest to show something new I would say to so show something that is more more unique and really um, you don't just find a question online but then uh, you find the relevant concept that you find interested first and then you develop it into a research question so if you google for quite a bit you will find uh, there is a document called like 300 stimulating ideas for IB like physics idea uh, and you will see a lot of different ideas uh, if you like to read that's fine but then I, I would say uh, not all of these will be good for you like for choosing a physics idea alternatively I would like to recommend you to go for a website called hyperphysics not only useful for your IA ideas uh, but it's also very useful for your revision in the future as well so this is a website of hyperphysics and you can see it show in a mind map uh, that's why I said it is very useful for revision uh, in the future 
For talking about the RA ideas, you can click into whatever topics that you find interested in, say mechanics, and say you can see uh, in like inside mechanics there are so so many other subtopics that you can look for. So things like uh, maybe our conservation of angular momentum could be one of the things that you you can study. And uh, say inside uh, you can take a look of how we actually measure angular momentum. And like I said uh, in the first place in this video, you need a good framework, established framework that is probably a formula that governs your research question. So like this one, it will be very good to show you uh, the relationship that has been found by you know, the people in the past already. And so your IA can hopefully use a maybe an interesting method to verify this. And the way that you can choose is obviously uh, you need the independent variable and dependent variable. So out of these formula, maybe you can choose one of them to be the independent variable and the other one to be the dependent variable. And so the rest of the equation Okay, there may be more than three, right? So the rest of the variables uh, should be constant. That means a control variable throughout your whole experiment. So that's why if you try to look at this website, Hyperphysics, it will be very helpful because it would just eventually uh, tell you some formula at the end, right? So this will be uh, something very useful, direct, and help you to formulate your ideas. Number two. This is actually the way that I find uh, usually the best IA that I encounter uh, will be using this approach. So uh, you can just go and review, uh, take a look of all the physics concepts that you learned in the past. So not only IB physics, so it could be also the IGCSE physics as well. And think, try to take a look and see which concept that you learn, but you only learn in the qualitative way. Okay, so that is to say, oh, you may just say uh, when A increase, B would decrease, something like this, right? Uh, but then it never mentioned uh, whether it will increase or decrease or whether or not it has uh, whatever relationship. Is it an inverse relationship or uh, what, what kind of relationship that uh, it actually be quantitatively? So those questions actually are very good, very good question. Uh, that also coincide with the idea of scientifically interesting. In the previous slide so example could be like uh, how the rate of evaporation affected uh, by you know different factors that you learn in IGCRC or it could be uh, we all know that away from the magnets the magnetic field strength is actually weaker but then uh, how does it decrease like what kind of math mathematical model uh, would be suitable to describe is it uh, just linear or would it be uh, inverse square or what another example could be like uh, we all know air resistance even in IB as well uh, it will increase with the greater surface area so how, how does it actually increase does it again increase uh, linearly or does it increase uh, in what kind of ratio so actually all these uh, they are actually formula that of course are fun and established by the previous researcher and you can always try how to google it and find it out and again uh, it will be very very interesting and uh, topics for you to do for your IA and there are so many different concepts you can uh, talk about within uh, each topic so really go and uh, take a look and review all the concepts that you learned in the past number three this is something that I would recommend for my EE student. I think it's more suitable for EE, but then if you are really strong in physics, but you are, you are taking some other extended essay, I, I guess this is fine for you to uh, think about this as well. So IYPT is actually uh, the name of International Young Physicist Tournament. And it's just a competition that is uh, worldwide and even uh, some of you, if you're re again really strong, you may want to participate in this. But what I want to focus on today here is uh, you can see there are different problems, not only this year, but also in the maybe past two years. Uh, and you can see there are actually quite some research questions that are extremely, extremely challenging and interesting. So things like, uh, I, I just randomly uh, read it really. Like here, it said uh, Tesla valve. So it's, uh, it also tells you some new ideas as, as well. Actually, I have no idea what Tesla valve is. But then if you read through all the questions, you should be able to find at least one or two 
uh, that is doable and also interesting. So like here you can see uh, it's just a valve that has a certain geometry, shape, passive, one direction valve and uh, basically this is the whole research question already. So try to study, create a certain valve, this valve and study uh, the relevant parameters which you can of course research on the internet. And so the best thing is I think uh, all these questions again uh, I would say if you take the question from here, you should really uh, give credit to this competition and this website as well because you are not the one that come up with such a problem. Uh, but then again, I would really appreciate uh, the quality of the problems uh, that have been posed here. And I think the best part is uh, since they, this tournament in itself is for secondary school students anyway, so it should be of a very suitable difficulty for you to solve as well assuming that you are very passionate and strong in physics number four 3d printing technology so assuming you have a 3d printing at home or you have one at school maybe from your dt subjects then this is something that you can think about as well so in the past uh, the physics ia may be limited by the resources that you have in the lab uh, or it's just simply hard for you to put in the resources to find, you know, spend so much time to find a certain material. So having know how to use uh, 3D printer and design a certain things uh, can enable you to study some topics that is that was very hard to study in the past in a normal high school setting. So for example, in the past, if you want to design a certain uh, experiment that would need different size of say a tube or cylinder, uh, it may not be easy to find all the size in the hardware workshop. But then if you could simply design it with your CAD software and print it out, it would just be quite straightforward and simple and then you can just do whatever experiment you want to do. You can actually also go to a website called Thingiverse uh, where you can download free, 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 free 3D printing files uh, and you can actually change the parameters on them. So uh, say you can also say, say this one, you can then simply study uh, how the length will affect the frequency. Of course, this I don't think is a really good research question anyway, but I think mean, this is just to show you an idea. After you get uh, a certain file, you can actually further change them manually in the CAD software if you know how to do so. So this would be something uh, that would get handy and also making your IA very unique as well. And lastly, if you still don't have any ideas, it may be good if you just take a quick look on what kind of apparatus you have at school uh, or what kind of vernier equipment, the data logger uh, you have in school because maybe there are sometimes you want to do a certain experiment, you just don't have the right uh, data logger at school. So just simply looking at what you have available uh, may help you to think of what to do directly. That's all for this video. If you like this video, please comment, subscribe, and like. In the next video, we'll start to talk about how to actually write your IA for each part.